In this video, we focus on the topic of metabolism. When we speak of metabolism, what we're referring to is the set of all of the chemical reactions that work to provide energy for the body and also provide the substances that are required for our continued growth, such as providing proteins. We can break metabolism into two different parts. Anabolism refers to reactions that build up complexity, synthesizing complicated molecules such as proteins from simple molecules such as amino acids. The other component to metabolism is called catabolism. Catabolism is where we take complex molecules such as proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates and break the chemical bonds in those to ultimately provide energy. Throughout the next several videos, we're going to be looking at a variety of processes related to anabolism and catabolism. In this particular unit, we are going to focus on just an introduction to these two processes to set the stage for later on. So to put some of these important concepts into words on paper, or on our whiteboard in this case, metabolism is referring to the set of all of the chemical reactions occurring within cells that allow them to generate energy, as well as generate the complex substances that are required for cells and the body to continue to grow and maintain their dynamic state. We break metabolism into two components. Those two components are anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism refers to chemical reactions that build complexity. In other words, they take simple materials such as glucose and join those molecules together via covalent bonds to form more complex molecules such as glycogen, starch, and other so-called complex carbohydrates that are used to store energy within the body. Similarly, amino acids link together to form peptides or proteins, and those proteins, as we learned previously, carry out a variety of functions in the body. Likewise, lipids producing molecules by taking simple fatty acids and linking those to glycerol to form triglycerides for transport and storage within the body. After these anabolic processes that create complex molecules that store energy or serve other functions in the body, such as is the case with proteins providing structural support or acting as enzymes, when it's time that the body needs energy, what happens are so-called catabolic processes, which break the covalent bonds in food, meaning break the covalent bonds that we've stored up in those complex carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, to ultimately release energy through a series of complex chemical reactions. So in total, there's a balance between anabolism to build up complex molecules and store energy and catabolism, which breaks those molecules down to release energy. All of these processes are based upon so-called biochemical pathways, where biochemical pathways are a series of chemical reactions. These chemical reactions occur in a specific order catalyzed by enzymes to carry out a single major function, such as energy generation. So in other words, when the body is generating energy, it's not just one chemical reaction that takes a carbohydrate and releases energy from it. Instead, it's a whole series of reactions that have to go in a specific order and are very closely regulated by the body in order to control the release of energy at the proper time so that if we're engaging in really intense activity, such as a vigorous run, we can accomplish that. Likewise, if we're sleeping and need a certain amount of energy for that, but not so much, the body can provide that energy as well through closely regulating these anabolic and catabolic biochemical pathways. For the rest of this unit and the next several videos, we're going to focus primarily on catabolism. That is the process by which we take complex molecules and break them down in order to yield the energy that's necessary for the cell. We focus on catabolism because we've already looked at anabolism in earlier videos as we explored how we generate proteins, how we generate triglycerides and other lipid-based molecules, as well as how we generate uh, polysaccharides from monosaccharides. So looking at catabolism, we're going to start with three classes of molecules, proteins, polysaccharides, and our complex lipids three main classes of molecules that we obtain dietarily and can use for energy. These are also three classes of molecules that we store within our body and can break down. The chemical reactions that occur through catabolism 
to yield energy are the same regardless of whether these molecules are consumed through our diet or whether they have been stored within our body. Let's take a look at some of these key processes. In general, the reactions that we use to break down complex molecules and form energy occur within the cell. So I'm showing here an illustration of the cell membrane in yellow to indicate that each of these molecules, proteins, polysaccharides, and lipids, enter the cell, and that is where the reactions of catabolism generally take place. Once these molecules are within the cell, they encounter enzymes that degrade them and do some oxidation reactions to ultimately transform these complex molecules, shown at the top, into the simplified molecules in the second row, namely the amino acids, the, the monosaccharides, and the individual fatty acids. Generalize everything up to this point as digestion, where we're taking complex molecules and through generally what we refer to as hydrolysis reactions using water to break covalent bonds and release these individual monomeric units. These molecules, amino acids, monosaccharides, and fatty acids, are then subject to what we refer to as degradation processes. In degradation, these molecules are broken down into even smaller molecules and generally broken down into a small set of different molecules, including as a primary molecule, acetyl-CoA, which I will show the structure of here and now. The acetyl-CoA molecule shown here is a product that results from the breakdown of amino acids, monosaccharides, and fatty acids. In other words, even though these three types of molecules are pretty distinct from one another and come from different types of original food sources, they ultimately all result in production of acetyl-CoA as a catabolic intermediate. In the structure of acetyl-CoA, I want you to pay close attention to this group. This is the so-called acetyl group within acetyl-CoA. The rest of this molecule is recycled to carry around these acetyl groups via this so-called thioester. Remember that an ester group had a carbonyl group directly bonded to an oxygen. A thioester, being that thio refers to a sulfur, has a sulfur atom in place of the oxygen atom here to bond to our carbonyl group and a methyl group in acetyl-CoA. So this is the portion, the two carbon molecule here with the two carbon atoms shown in blue, that is, we could think of as the business end of acetyl-CoA. What happens to acetyl-CoA? Because thus far we haven't said anything about the generation of energy. Well, acetyl-CoA goes through biochemical cycles such as the citric acid cycle, and followed by electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation as processes that ultimately yield a molecule referred to as ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is an energy storage molecule that through the breakage of high energy bonds will release energy that can drive other chemical reactions in the cell that require energy. So our next stop on our journey of catabolism is taking a closer look at the ATP molecule and how does that act to provide energy. We will tackle that topic in the next video, so stay tuned. Recap what we've learned here. We can break the process of catabolism into three different stages. Number one, digestion, taking complex molecules such as proteins, polysaccharides, and lipids that are either from our diet or stored within our body. Those enter the cell and they are digested through hydrolysis reactions that use water to break covalent bonds and yield the monomeric units. Those monomeric units then get further degraded in the second stage of catabolism to yield a set of ubiquitous small molecules, primarily acetyl-CoA, where the acetyl group we think of as the business end of the molecule that is used in the citric acid cycle to generate ultimately energy through the energy generation phase of the process, which includes both the citric acid cycle and as a follow-up electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation to, as the end game of all of these stages of catabolism, provide ATP, a molecule that through the breakage of high energy phosphate bonds will generate energy available to drive processes within the cell.